So throughout this project, I'm going to try and keep the car as a runner just because I need to move it inside and outside the garage um, at different stages depending on where I need access to it. The engine may subsequently um, come out or at least the subframe might come out, I don't know. But at the moment, um, I'm trying to keep it running. And one issue I have is that it is incredibly difficult to start from cold. It needs like extended cranking and then only very reluctantly comes into life. Now, once it's warm, even if it's only just run for like five minutes or something, it tends to be for a few more hours, pretty much starting on the button. And this suggests to me that the culprit might be the warm-up regulator, which is this guy here. I've already changed the fuel pump, uh, fuel accumulator and uh, fuel filter. I haven't run any pressure tests on the on the fuel delivery system. I do have the kit for that, which I may resort to if, if, this, if the warm-up regulator transpires not to be the culprit. But I thought since it's relatively easy to remove and it should probably get rebuilt anyway, I'm going to take it off, send it away. Uh, get it rebuilt uh, for about £250 and put it back on. And if that uh, solves the problem, great. I'll move on and then take a proper look at the engine in more detail at a later date. If it doesn't solve the issue, then, it, well, it's probably good to get it rebuilt anyway. So I'm just going to do a short video on taking it off the car. Now, the observant amongst you will have noticed just now that I'd already taken the air box off the top of the engine because although the warm regulator is not quite underneath it, the, there's one screw for it which is kind of difficult to get to without the air box, um, with the air box on. And since it's so easy to take it off, I thought I would do so. Now, basically, just two, there are two nuts uh, on each on each side on these little brackets here, same the other side, and there's just a pipe under there which just attaches to the bottom of uh, the air filter there. So there's no need to. Um, open it up or anything like that, just unbolt it either side, take the pipe off and lift it off. So that will reveal the majesty that is the Bosch Kjetronic fuel injection system. So it may transpire that part of the issue is some kind of vacuum or leak or electrical fault or something like that. I mean, these these systems are not very tolerant of uh, vacuum issues. They all rely on kind of uh, you know, different electrical resistances and things like that. But the warm-up regulator itself, in order to compensate on the cold start, basically has a bimetallic strip in it. The idea is that when that is heated electrically after you start the car, the strip heats up and slowly tapers off the compensation uh, on the start. The trouble is when that strip fails, essentially fails in a way such that if it start, affects the starting pressure of the car and makes it um, very difficult without extended cranking to, to get it going. Unfortunately, just disconnecting the electrical supply to it doesn't help the issue. Um, it's not like the uh, cold start jet, for example, which sometimes if that gives an issue, you can just disconnect it so that it doesn't fire. The issue with the warm up regulator is, is associated with the strip. And once the strip has failed in the kind of the, the bad position, as it were, there's, there's nothing you can, can do really. So I've taken off the electrical connector. I've taken off this connector, which I think goes in, in there. It just comes out of there. So I'm just going to you know, plug that back in. And now I've just got to disconnect the two fuel lines here. So the uh, connectors are 12 mil. I think I need to hold the counter nut to release that. So I'm going to hold the counter nut with a 12 mil and then come on top with the adjustable spanner. Um, I think actually that connector looks a bit smaller. That nut looks a bit smaller than the other ones. The one might be 12, the other might be 14, we'll see. Right, now this one's come off. Now what I found when I did the um, the pressure accumulator at the back, because uh, that was another possible culprit that I think turned out to be a red herring, but still good to change. But what I found when I was doing the rear fuel pack is that you have these nuts on the metal fuel lines that go into the, the thread to connect them to whatever they're connecting to, but sometimes the nut rusts itself to the line. So when I did the, the rear metal fuel line, I found that I snapped the fuel line while I was trying to undo it. Now, thankfully, that hasn't happened on here, but it might have been a good idea to just spray a bit of WD-40 on that nut first. So I'm just going to do with the other one. Now, I don't think I can get that one off anymore without undoing the other one, so let's do that. 
so yeah the other that larger nut is a 14 but thankfully it has come off relatively easily as well right so both of those now undone and are just off now that one sort of seems to lift off quite quite easily that one i'm not sure if i'm going to get that off without um without taking that larger line off actually it's, which shouldn't be too difficult to take off because it's just this bit here and then it feeds into the distributor uh, just there so that's not the end of the world but let's unbolt the the unit itself from the manifold from the block and uh, see see what happens so that's a um five mil allen head and it was very very stiff I'm quite lucky I didn't snap anything there actually so just be very careful just apply pressure very carefully I have sprayed it with a little bit of WD-40 uh, beforehand I didn't leave it for very long so um, I might have been wiser to leave it for longer but anyway that's going now and hopefully the other one won't put up as much of a fight so in the end that actually came out without too much of a fight so you do see like repair kits advertised on ebay i even saw a video on youtube of someone who just started to take it apart in their workshop um unless you really know what you're doing i wouldn't do that like i was exchanging messages online with a very experienced uh, specialist in these cars ex mercedes all the rest of it and he said no just send it away to someone who really knows uh, what they're doing i can't remember the company i'm sending this to off the top of my head but i'm going to look it up obviously to get the address uh, when i send it and i will add that uh, to the next scene on this video um, but yeah long and the short of it don't bother trying to open it up you'll probably just wreck it and it won't work properly and yeah no let the professionals do it